I think mixers need some sort of um, <clears throat> consistency because we need to be comfortable. Uh, so yeah, some of the, you know, like I got certain hardware inputs that are always there, certain plugins, certain delays that are coming on this side of the board and reverbs. So we got the setup that's sort of the same. Now, every mix is in a way approached differently. The rough will tell you, okay, you need to pay attention to the vocals, the drums, the bass line, the loop, it's a sample. It'll give you a lot of information. So every mix is sort of different, you know, on the, on the focal point. It's changed so much in the last 70 years where we're getting tracks that are not necessarily recorded well. Um, because, you know, you know, anybody can get a computer and be a producer, engineer, mixer, artist now, which is great. This is great because it gives us a lot more you know, creative freedom to, to kids like, say, my, my age, I wanted a four track and I couldn't afford one, where if I had multi-tracks, 24, that would have been like, woohoo, you know? So nowadays it's great, technology is very, very good in, in offering that. But um, at the same time, on our end, we get a lot of stuff that, you know, it's not recorded that well. Um, but I figure if it's made it here, it's here for a reason. So I got to obviously make the best of it. Not, there's nothing wrong with it because again, sonic soul perspective. We're trying to, it's a recording. We're trying to catch a performance. So if that performance is distorted, sure, technically is not right, but but they obviously felt something and felt like it needed to stay the way it was, even though everyone's heard that it's been distorted. So I don't question that at all. Would I have done it differently? Yeah. But when it gets here, I go for what is given to me and try to make the best out of it. So uh, if I get a bad, you know, poorly recorded vocal, I sort of focus on that. I shape my mix around that so that all of a sudden the bad sounding recorded vocal, it doesn't sound as bad anymore because everything's around that. Uh, and again, it's all colors how they touch each other. So um, if I get a, a kick, that sounds horrible and I'm not so into replacing kicks I try the you know even though I've done it and I still do I try to go for what's given to me I oh I say if it's if it made it this far there's a reason for that so if it sounds like a bad kick it's all subjective sure sonically it may be a bad kick but how does that kick tra talk to the snare and how does that snare talk to the hi-hat and how does that hi-hat talk to the kick what are they doing? So if, if I feel like I can shape something around that kick that, that sort of drives the song, then I'll leave that kick. I'll leave the way it is and I'll shape things around that kick. And so I try to find the weakest link and focus on that and shape around that. I don't mix for a particular speaker, which I know we've had, you know, with other peers, we have, have had this discussion before. And what my job is, I feel, is I want to get it sounding the best I can make it sound coming out of this room, the when it leaves this room. So therefore, I do reference on smaller speakers. If it, and again, the style of music kicks in. If I'm doing a John Mayer, I know that it's not going to be played in the club, so why do I need to pay attention to the sub right. as much as I do to the guitars and the vocal? So, and then I have a, say, say uh, Kanye West song, that I know is going, going, going to be played in the club, so I do pay attention to the lower sub kick and how the 808 and the bass and the kick sort of like how they live in that, in the lower register. So it really depends on the style of music, but I do reference monitors just to make sure that if they do play it on the radio or on MTV that it just doesn't sound muffled because it hurts my ears when I play it loud or vice versa. It doesn't matter what monitor you use, I think. It's, I think it's how well you know that monitor, how well it translates to the outside world. I'm really blessed that I've been in the same room for so many years to know my monitors, my main. So when I'm mixing something that's really, you know, again, that needs to, needs to be low and good and feels good on the low registers, and, Luckily, I got monitors that over the years we've gone through different, you know, amps and different subs to make them sound the way I think they should sound that translates well in the, uh, you know, in the outside world. 
So hopefully, so hopefully it's working.